Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Debbie and I read a lot of books. Uh, this book I read on my phone, on my Kindle app. It's on the shared library between me and my dad. It seems that my mum read this book first. I think she read it in the pandemic, which was must have been a really old time to have read this book based on what it's about. And then told my dad to read it. And then I came across it in the library and read it. And I did it in about two days. And yeah, it's called The Age of Miracles and it's by Karen Thompson Walker. I think I just need to get into that blurb. Um, if I can find it. <laughs> it's, yeah, I've just bought it up on Amazon. The Age of Miracles, Karen Thompson Walker. This book was kind of terrifying and sad and I had all the feels reading this book. I'll admit it was, it is a kind of a slow book, but at the same time, I just had to know what was going to happen. I just had to know what was going to happen. On an ordinary Saturday in a California suburb, Julia awakens to discover that something has happened to the rotation of the earth. The days and nights are growing longer and longer. Gravity is affected. The birds, the tides, human behavior, and cosmic rhythms are thrown into disarray. In a world that seems filled with danger and loss, Julia must also face surprising developments in herself and in her personal world. Divisions widening between her parents, strange behaviour by her friends, the pain and vulnerability of first love, a growing sense of isolation and a surprising rebellious new strength. It's got kind of a sci-fi dystopia type thing going on as you got from the blurb they wake up one morning and find out that the rotation of the earth has slowed down and they somehow manage to gain an extra hour in the night throughout the book the rotation gets slower and slower and it comes to the point where by the end of the book you're having 48 hours of daylight and 48 hours of night and you see how this affects Julia's life and her friends and her family and it's just in this little section of the world in California you don't see how it affects and how other governments are dealing with this when I told my parents I was reading it my mum was just there going saying oh yeah I read this and then I told your dad to read it and it was like oh I kind of came across it by accident but I'm reading it now and it's very much a case of you're following Julia it's just Julia and she is talking from the future talking about her childhood and when this started happening and you get the idea that as you read it that however old Julia is now it's never explicitly stated how old she is when she starts telling this story that it has been going on for a while and that there is no explanation as to why it's happening and that it has affected everybody's lives in different ways there's that whole thing of just like with everything that happened to her family during this none of it would have happened if the earth hadn't slowed down it's a truly heartbreaking story i will say that because as you can imagine from a story like this there's only two ways it can go really either there's going to be some kind of miracle and the earth stops slowing or they're all gonna die and it kind of leaves you a little bit in a limbo state on the way to one of those endings. I'll just say that. it's At the end of the book, it tells you where it's going to go, but it doesn't end on that fate. It, you just know that that fate is nigh. As well as having that sci-fi dystopia thing, it's a coming-of-age story for Julia, because you see Julia grow up, you see her friendships uh, fall apart, you see her relationships with a boy in her class, change as she gets older i must admit with the rate of the book it's hard to tell how long it all takes place over but it feels like it's happening quite quickly like ultimately i think that across the book it maybe takes about a year or so by the time you get to the end it feels like it's been about a year because i must admit the first chapters it seems like a lot happens in like a small amount of days and you get a lot of information about what is happening to Julia, um, her family and her neighbours and everything. I'll admit that if you're looking for very plot driven, this probably isn't the book for you. I feel like this is more character driven because once you know what's happening, it feels quite repetitive. But not so much in a bad way because even though it does have that repetition and you know what's coming, 
you still want to know what happens next you're just like oh give me that miracle give me that miracle and you know it's called the age of miracles so there is an element of heart warming to it but at the same time you still come away with a bit of a broken heart <laughs> with everything that happens with julia's friends and the way that they become distant from each other and the way that like the families and the friends and the neighbors all treat each other based on how they react to this because it comes a point and it's just like, do we just create our own structure of time? Or do we just go with the rhythm and just let our bodies adapt to having 48 hours of uh, daylight and 48 hours of night time? But it becomes split into two groups of the people that decide to go to like natural time and the ones that are trying to like enforce time because they know there's no other way. And it's just like, if I was in this situation, which would I be? And I was just thinking, I'd probably try to make sense of it. And I probably would find a way to be able to still go about my life. Because ultimately, the people who are trying to adapt and, you know, stay awake for 48 hours and then sleep for 48 hours, like, that's not feasible. So the idea of thinking, oh, actually, you know, maybe once a week or something, or once every two weeks, we are going to set a time to be one o'clock, and then we're just going to do that for a full week or fortnight, and then we'll adapt again, and we'll try to create our own clock again. To me, that would have made the most sense in this situation. I don't think I could have been somebody who was like a free timer in this book because it comes to the point when even though it says that the body's naturally changed to that rhythm it's not feasible for the world to carry on like that and this book really does look at that and the fact that this book was inspired by something that actually happened is kind of scary actually where there was a day when i think was it was in mexico or something where they woke up and they thought that they'd gained a few extra minutes in the day and yeah the idea that just something as simple as that developed into this book is beyond me <laughs> um but it's just such an interesting premise for a book yeah it just made me feel all kind of weird feelings i think having with the through the pandemic as well it kind of skews the way you read it i do wonder what it would be like to read this before the pandemic having lived through the pandemic though and seeing kind of a similar reaction in this book of the thing of like stockpiling and thinking that things are going to run out and it's just like it even though i haven't lived through this exact thing it feels very similar to what we as a world went through during the pandemic yeah it's a very thought-provoking book seeing this story through julia is a, a teenage girl is interesting it's i think it has an edge to it that seeing it from somebody else's point of view probably wouldn't have had it was a beautiful read but it was heartbreaking it was heartbreaking so i'll just give you one final shot of the front of the book there you go yeah the age of miracles karen thompson walker i don't know what else to say about it other than that it was just heartwarming heartbreaking and very bizarre to read after living through covid and at the moment, at the point, we are living with COVID now, but after going through a lockdown, which kind of happens in this book, there is a point when they're just like, don't go out into the sun, you know, we don't know how the UV rays, there's a point when then the characters actually get burnt through their clothes, and yeah, it's just, it's scary. It's almost like reading a horror story, because it's something that you feel like could actually happen, and yeah, reading this in the winter was a bad time because like, I'm waking up in the dark and going to bed in the dark and I'm coming home from work in the dark and yeah, it put me in a very, very strange mood reading this book, but I couldn't put it down. I couldn't put it down. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time with another video.